Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith. Well, actually, this is the Ramsey Custom Shop, and my name is Gary. I wish Keith Finner was here in person. He is here in spirit, though. And I don't know about you guys that watch Keith Finner, but he is a great uh, inspiration. And um, and when I say inspiration, not necessarily you know from a motivational standpoint, although he is that as well. But I just say that he inspires thought and creativity and ideas and he inspires quality and he inspires thought process that the uh, work and, and engineering that goes into creating the fixture is probably the most important part of the job. And you'll see him spend two, three hours or more coming up with a fixture to do machining or welding on something that only takes 30 minutes to actually do the work. And something I need to get better at, something that I need to do more of, and got a project today, been working on this uh, roll cage, roll bar, Jeep roll bar mount, got two or three other videos on it, and what I'm gonna show you today is uh, take an old piece of pipe, use it to mimic the roll cage to do fixturing and welding. So. Let's uh, get into the project. All right, as you guys saw in the last video series, we were making this um, accessory mount for Jeeps that's gonna bolt to a roll cage. Well, I don't have a roll cage here. I don't have a Jeep here to test fit this thing with. And um, I don't have any roll cage material here, but I went by the local uh, pipe steel yard and they gave me this drop. It's 21 inches long and uh, common you know oil fill pipe stuff two and three eighths inch od with all the rust build up it actually came out to be 2.40 so the od of the roll bar is 2.28 so we got a little bit of room to get this rust off and get this down i don't need to remove the entire length of it i just need to remove you know enough of the material in a couple of areas for this to fit down on there so I can do a, tr a, tr a true up and test fit, make sure it's gonna fit correctly. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is use this going forward. And what I should have done is made this to begin with, and then I can use it as a jig for these, these uh, end caps that get welded in. I can pop the end caps on, get them square to this, slide the cover piece out over it after I get it, get it bent, Put it down clamp it down on the table and then you know get some tacks on it and that way i know it's it's going to be consistent and if uh matt if matthew is correct and is able to sell a bunch of these things then uh you know it's going to be an opportunity for some small production runs so having some decent jig set up to make it go smoother will help us keep the cost down and uh our productivity up and it's all good so um I'm not really set up to do this in the lathe very well because I don't have one of those bell mouth um, uh, centers to go in it and uh, in the tailstock. So we're gonna do a little bit of a different approach. I'm gonna whack the ends off on the uh, bandsaw just to true them up. These have a nasty flame cut uh, burr on them. And, uh, and we're gonna do a little bit of layout work or actually we're gonna uh, get this, you know, knock a lot of this rust off of it so we have something cleaner to work with. And we'll just kind of do a little layout work and uh, a little bit of turning and uh, go from there. We'll show you what we're going to be up to here. All right, you see this thing leaves a, the bandsaw does a nice job. Um, I'll, once it's running, I'll just kind of hit the outside of it with a file. But, um, you know, it's, it's uh, probably not as square as facing it off in the lathe, but it's a pretty nice cut. So go ahead and get it chucked up and uh, hit it with some memory. All right, like I said, this is the only live center I have, and you see it's a small 
uh, the small type, you know, with a MT2 to go up in the tailstock, and uh, that obviously won't work on the on the big end. So I need to uh, pick up a bell mouth uh, style or bell style one at some point, but we'll make this uh, work for what we're trying to do here. So um, let me get this uh, chucked up in here. Let me get this out of the way because we're not going to need that. All right. So, I mean, this uh, <laughs> this little lathe is, uh, you know, we, uh, we do the best we can with what we have here. I'm going to take this off as well just to get it out of the way. All right, there's some uh, 80 grit or six, I think it's 60 grit, no 50 grit uh, emery that's kind of worn out. I got some good pieces too, but we'll, we'll use these and see what we can do with it. All right, I'm going to turn the RPMs down on it and start this out on a slow speed because I have no idea what it's going to be doing when I turn it on here. I know you guys are going to hate me for getting this uh, dust all over the lathe, but we're just trying to get stuff done around here. In the fab shop. So we're going to flip it around and get the other end. So it's uh, really heavily pitted and you know, there's, I mean, I could try to turn that whole thing down just to skim that off of there, but we're not going to do that. Um, what I'm going to do is, um, well, let's take it out. We'll do a little layout on it. And I'm going to clean up the lathe. Blow it off, get this dust off of it. So we're just kind of eyeballing this, all right? It's nothing... Uh, Nothing terribly technical. We just want to get it eyeballed up in here. I'm going to put a little mark there. One there. The same here. One there. One there. You uh, machinists, you know, what they would do is uh, get this thing centered up from end to end, and then they would pick a number like one and a quarter inch that's a good number and make that one and a quarter and make that one and a quarter. I mean, that's just how they work. I'm a fabricator, I'm not a machinist. I happen to have a lathe, so don't confuse me with a machinist and hold me to that standard. And I'm also not trying to be, you know, a, uh, a hack as well. You know, I want to try to do things as good as I can do them, but you have to kind of keep things in perspective, what, is it, what it is you're trying to accomplish. So let's get this back in the lathe. All right, we're going to uh, get our witness marks uh, all the way around on it. I thought that would have uh, taken some of the OD off of that with by removing that rust, but yeah, I mean it took maybe a thousandth off of it. So uh, we're at uh, two third, two, you know, two point two inches four hundred thousandths, and we need to go to two inches two hundred twenty-eight thousandths. So we only need twelve thousandths. So we're just going to take some baby cuts on it here. Okay. 
Ich mach bitte nicht. Ja. That should be down there really close to what we need. So that's uh, two inches, 289 thousandths. That should be like really close to what we need. So I'm gonna go ahead and flip it around, get the other end done off camera, and then we'll bring you back at the end. All right, just <clears throat> wrapping up this video, we got this, uh, our uh, fixture made here that uh, Keith Fenner inspired us to make. And you see how these uh, fit on there pretty nicely. They don't fit perfect because the uh, inside radius, you know, has the plasma cut draft edge. <clears throat> and you see how that kind of wants to rock up there. And again, that's, that's why we made this to uh, get this to fit down on there. And uh, the other thing that happens is when we cut this open on the bandsaw, uh, the slit there causes it to spring open. So it's it's a little more loose than the outside of the uh, of this piece here. But we use our clamps and get that pulled down on there the best we can. We may have to do a little tweaking on it as we go. All right, I'm gonna have to do a little fitting to get that to, I think I overbent my piece there just a little bit. You can see it's kind of funky, but let me work on it and get that fitting on there better. <clears throat> All right, so just threw that in the vise real quick and uh, tweaked on it a little bit. You see we got a pretty nice fit up there now. So we'll use our clamp and, and get a little pressure, just kind of helping hold it down. Then I'm gonna tap that block around in there and get it squared up so we have a, a flush fit edge. This bottom piece needs to come out a little bit. So we're gonna weld that along that seam. You can see we don't have a really perfect fit up on the gap. It's not bad, uh, but we're gonna weld it up and build it up just a little bit enough to grind it down and I'll come and weld it on the inside. But I'm gonna weld it on, I'm gonna tack it on the outside in this position and then turn it up to a different position where I can get a better angle at it to weld it. So we'll show you that. So you can see our, our fit up over here isn't the greatest. So I'm gonna get a couple of tacks here. And then when I get it in the other position, I'm gonna do some clamping on that to get that to fit up a little bit better there. The fitment on this outer edge is not critical. The real critical piece is getting it fit up snug to the, the roll cage, which we have our, our diameter there. All right, so let's get this tacked.
So this is the end that wasn't fitting up great. I'm gonna put a clamp across it here to uh, pull that in. Let's do it this way. So get a couple of tacks on that and then we'll uh, proceed on welding it up. All right, I'm filming this on my iPhone and I had a call come in there and interrupted the last little bit, but um, you can see with the TIG, um, you know, it's not the prettiest. I didn't have the best propping set up here, but again, I'm gonna grind this down. But the key thing I was trying to do is weld on this eighth inch edge here and not have it uh, take off the edge so I can grind that flush there. So we should be able to throw a grinder on it, but. Um, and get that smoothed out and I'm gonna now that I've got it welded I'm gonna flip it over before I grind it and weld some on the inside just a little bit uh, to give it a little extra strength in case we grind you know a little bit too much away there but anyway uh, that's it guys um, we'll wrap up this video thanks to Keith Finner for all the great videos and inspiration to uh, not hesitate to make a jig or fixture out of anything you have